What's up everyone? Welcome back. So in the previous video, we created a very simple CRUD REST API on top of our in-memory database, which is our Python list. Before we create a persistent database or before we introduce PostgreSQL into the picture, I thought it would be a very good idea for us to split this into a structure that is going to grow as our project grows. Now this is where FastAPI routers come in. FastAPI routers allow us to make our application modular by splitting our API endpoints into modules or grouping them into modules on which you can access them using a specific prefix. Now, if you've not understood that, all we're going to do is to create an object that is similar to our app instance that we have right here. And within that object, we can be able to group API endpoints that are related together and we can put them in their own separate module. Now, to begin, we're going to first of all split this entire module or Python file into different modules to hold different data so let us begin by first of all removing our books from this file now i'm going to go ahead and cut it and then i'll move this into our new file which i'm going to call book data.py and inside there is where i'm going to place that so once i've been able to do that i'm also going to move the pedantic models so that i can put them inside their own module i'm going to come and remove this create a new file that i'm going to call schemas dot py and that's where we're going to have the pedantic models that are specific to books now i'm also going to move the necessary inputs to this specific module by first of all going to the top right here now i'm going to just simply move these inputs so i'll move the base model import to this file and then i'll have to also move our so i'll just have to import them so i'll come and say from book data we are going to get access to our books and once that is done the next thing is going to be for us to also import our schema so to do that we shall say from schemas we are going to go ahead and import our book as well as our book update model so once that is done now let's go ahead and create a new folder that we're going to call our source folder and this is where all the code that's going to be so for us to begin we're going to first of all create an init.py file and this init.py file is simply going to mark this source folder as a python package now we're going to move everything to a new package that we're going to call our books package so all information or all logic that is related to books is going to be found within this books directory now create a new file and i'm going to call it init.py and this is going to mark the books package as a python package now begin by moving book data as well as schemas.py into our books package so that we have all the logic that is related to books found within our books package. Now that we've created our books package, let us go ahead and also create one that's going to contain the API endpoints that are going to be specific to our books. So I'll create a new file and I'm going to call this routes.py. You can call it whatever you want, but I've simply chose to call it routes. Now in here is where we're going to create our first API router. But before we do that, let us first of all move our API endpoints from this file, which is our main.py into where we're going to have them with a router so i'm going to copy everything again and i'm going to cut everything and once i've been able to do that then i'll move to routes.py and i'm going to simply introduce everything there now one thing we're going to do is to first of all create our router object so think of the router object as an object that is very similar to our first api instance in this case this object can help us to access pretty much everything that we can access from a first api instance for example if we created that object we can access the http methods as well as any other method that we can access on our app instance however that is a router that is only to group related endpoints together so let us begin by creating an api router so we, go, we shall go to our first api and say from first api we are going to go ahead and import the api router class and once we've been able to do that now we're going to call our router the book router 
so this is going to be an instance of our api router class now once we've been able to do that now let's go ahead and change our api endpoint so that they make use of our router object so to do that i mean simply go ahead and copy what we have as at app and then i press ctrl shift and l so this can be command shift and l if you're in mac os so i'll just go ahead and press that so it's going to highlight every occurrence of at app and then i have to just replace that with at book router so this is going to now access all the http methods just like we see right here so let us go ahead and also fix some of the things that are not defined within this file so we're going to import the status module and we're also going to import let's actually go ahead and just use the inputs that we have inside this site so i'll just come and copy what we have here and i'll cut it so i'll just go ahead and introduce it within our routes file so this is going to be from first api.exceptions shall import our http exception now i think there's one that's missing and that's going to be our typing list import so we shall now go to our routes and add that and this is going to be just enough to fix whatever is within our file now keep in mind that just introducing our router is not enough we have to go ahead and include this router onto our app instance so that we can be able to reflect these apps on our api so to do that what we're going to do is to go back to our main.py and delete it the reason that's why we're deleting it is because we are going to be accessing everything from now on inside this source folder so we're going to be writing all our app logic inside the init.py so that our main entry point for this project is going to be our source folder so what we're going to do in this case is to import our first api class and once we've imported that now let's create our app instance oh. so the moment we've created our app instance all we need to do is to just go ahead and import all these routers that we've created so in case we need an auth router we shall create a module just like the one that you see here or a package and we shall create it in the same folder structure we shall have our routes models schemas and everything that's related to auth inside that specific package so this is what we're going to be doing from now so once with that is done now let's go ahead and have our router from our books module or our books package so i'll just go ahead and import that by saying from source dot books in this case we are going to go ahead and import our routes so our router is found within source books and then routes so you have to say source dot books dot routes and then we can go ahead and import that router which is our book router so once we've done that, then let's go ahead and import or include this into our main application. So it's simply done by doing app.include and then we call the book router object or any sort of router object. The next thing we can do is to define which prefix on which in, on which we're going to access all the endpoints that are related to our books. Now in this case, what we're going to do is to go ahead and provide a special attribute and that is going to be the prefix attribute. Now the prefix attribute is going to be one that is going to help us to define an endpoint on which all related endpoints are going to be accessed for example all our books endpoints are going to be accessed on a specific api endpoint now let's say this is going to be the books endpoint and once we've been able to do that now we can go to our routes and then simply change this from slash books to slash and then we can be able to access them on the slash box endpoint so let us go ahead and modify this now we have this uh, being slash box so i'll go ahead and edit this so that we can have slash books so i remove books and then i'll go ahead and remove this and then we can remove what we have here so that we have slash book id so we shall access it on slash books slash book id and then you can also do the same thing for our update and our delete so i'm going to go ahead and remove this so that you can have all of them being accessed on the slash book slash books 
endpoint or the slash box prefix. Now, once we've been able to do that, the next thing is going to be for us to kind of add a version on top of our API. Now, notice that we are having our first API instance, but this first API instance can also be used to specify some things about the API, such as the version of the API and stuff like that. Now, the way we do that is to go within our first API class or instance, and we shall now go ahead and specify all those. I'm going to create a variable called version, and this is going to be our version one. So we shall look at API versioning as time goes on. But for now, our API versioning can just simply be done by specifying the version of the app. So I'll just simply say this is going to be version one of our app. And then we can also change our API prefix to include that version. So you can do something like prefix is going to be equal to slash API and then slash the version of the API. So in this case, I'll use an F string and then I'll specify that all API endpoints that are related to books are going to be found on the slash API slash version one slash books prefix. Now, once that is out of the way, let us go ahead and run our server and then access our API. So I'm going to go ahead and run our API with first API dev, and then I'll specify that our app is now going to be found within our source directory. So notice what is going to happen. First API is going to now see the source directory as the main entry point of our application, and it will scan for the app instance of which it will find it within our dunder init.py. And that's why you see from source import app. Another thing we can do is to go ahead and add some information in here. For example, we can add a title. Now, these are known things you're going to be able to see right now, but when we look at the Swagger API documentation, all these details will be specified there. So we're going to add the title, and the title is going to be our bookly. We can also add a simple description, and this description is going to be, let's say, a uh, REST API or a book review web service. So I'll add a comma right here. And now we can also add tags to our router so that we can also add that, something that we shall see when we get to the API documentation part. So just come here and specify a list of tags. And now this will be accessed on the API endpoints that have the tags of books. So once that is done, our server is running. Let us go ahead and test our API endpoints. So I'm going to go back to our RESTFOX. So right here on RESTFOX, I'm going to go ahead and go to our books folder that we created in the previous video. Now I have only one API endpoint. I think I deleted the others by mistake, but let's go ahead and do that. So I'll now try to access our API on slash API slash version one and then slash books, and then this is going to go ahead and return all the books that are present on our slash API slash version one. So just like that, we've been able to pretty much change our folder structure and also include routers to group related API endpoints together. And this is our folder structure that we're going to be using from now going on. So the moment we shall be introducing a new folder or a new functionality all we do is to go ahead and just add a package on here and that package will have the logic that is specific to that specific functionality one other thing that we're going to do before concluding this video is to introduce our requirements for txt file something that i did not do at the beginning of this course so i'll go ahead and simply open up a new terminal and then i'll freeze all our requirements within our virtual environment to, to a special file called the requirements.txt. Now what this is going to do is to keep a record of the requirements and their versions as we have them for our project so that even if you are to clone this in 2030, you will be able to get the same requirements for this project. So I'll go ahead and add that. And now this is the folder structure that we have. We have grouped all book related data or book related logic into its own file and this is going to help us keep our project modular in this video we've been able to simply create a folder structure that is going to scale as long as our project is going to scale or 
folder sweater that is going to become big with our project i hope you've enjoyed and learned from this video if you've done so please leave a like on the video do not forget to subscribe if you're new and if you want to support me financially i have a buy me a coffee in the link down in the description also i have a patreon that i'm trying to open up where i'm going to be creating more of these videos thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video we're going to be introducing a database using sql model thanks for watching and Let's see ourselves in the next one.